Um, the first uh, first session we're going to talk about here. Um, I was I, I'm, I'm a big um, energy guy, positive energy guy. I like quotes. Um, a lot of these things are, are really really important to me as a trader. Um, if you knew, if, you know, uh, my son is back here. He, he knows what I what I deal with uh, regularly uh, during the day, uh, during the week. I, I'm, I'm I'm in my I'm in my man cave during during the day. Um, he'll, he'll tell you that I'm, I sit at my computer in my garage, and I, I, have, I have a nice we have a nice big house, but still, um, I, I I'm secluded and I'm basically working in a uh, a very uh, tight area in my garage, and it's not it's nothing really um, elaborate or, or luxurious or anything like that. But I'm by myself, right? I'm by myself doing these things, doing, working by myself. So I need something to keep my mind working at all times. And a lot of things, lots of, you know, maybe it's deep breathing, or maybe it's doing some exercises, or just taking a walk. But I also do a lot of positive um, mental exercises as well too. So. Reading quotes, reading um, experiences, learning about history are the, some of the things that I like to do to help me get better. So here's a quote by Jesse Livermore. Anybody heard of Jesse Livermore? Okay. Jesse Livermore was one of the best, greatest traders at the turn of the 20th century. So in the early 1900s, he was trading out of some places called, these things called bucket shops, right? These are places, these are like stock shops where they buy, where they buy stocks. But he would, he would go into these places, and he was absolutely one of the, the greatest traders because he understood human psychology. Think about this. A hundred years ago, when the stock market was really just getting started, it was about 30, 40 years on, when he, when he, was, when he was alive and trading, this guy made millions of dollars. Now, of course, it didn't end well. He committed suicide um, some years later. But, but, but the point is, is that he understood the mentality and the psychology of trading and investing. Also, so his book... <coughs> I thought was appropriate to share with all of you guys. All through time, people have basically acted and reacted the same way in the market as a result of greed, fear, ignorance, and hope. That is why the numerical formations patterns occur and recur on a constant basis. Now, this is something I was talking with Jasmine about and Sarah about. Remember, we talked about the spectrum of fear and greed. We all live on a spectrum of fear and greed. This was this quote was almost 80 years ago, and he and he got it. He understood it, right? He was one of the first people who really identified the psychology of trading and the psychology of markets. That's all it is. I'm a very simple person. I like, I like basic. I like simple. I like easy stuff. And if you're telling me that human psychology trading is on a spectrum of only two emotions, fear and greed, fear on the left side, uh, greed on the other, we all live on that spectrum of fear and greed. Nobody is a computer. Everybody is emotional. Everybody is w worried about two things, right? When it comes to their wealth, they're worried about losing, and they're greedy, and they want to make more, right? There's nobody in this room who is not fearful about losing or is not worried about making more money, right? And the example I gave you earlier when we were eating, you know, <clears throat> if you lost, if you had $10,000 and you're all of a sudden, literally in a couple of days, it went down to $1,000, are, are you like in a, in a panic? Are you, are you worried? Are you fearful? You know? But on the flip side, what if your 10000 went to fifty? Right? You, you missed your 5x on your money, right? And are you, are you fearful? Or are you greedy? Are you feeling really good? You're for it, right? You're happy, right? You're thinking, okay, I'm going six figures next. My 50 is going to 100. You're not worried about the Ukraine and Russian situation, are you? You're not worried about Greece maybe exiting the euro, right? You're just thinking about that 50 is going to double, right? So that's, that's, your, that's your greed part. We're, we, we all think that way. That's everybody. Everybody. In this room, everybody around. We're all on, on that spectrum of fear and greed. Where we are on the spectrum is really makes makes the, makes the point. So, <clears throat> a little bit about me. I, I, I won't, I won't uh, uh, dwell on this too much. Um, I, I run a company called ExplosiveOptions.net. Um, I, I, I manage a, a portfolio for subcash growers, a hedge fund, uh, as well. Right after that, but the pension 401k plan I managed in 19 uh, from 1996 to 1999. Um, I mean, yeah, frequent contributor to street.com, as Jeff said, uh, realmoney.com, uh, and options profits. My, uh, anybody uh, ever watch Mad Money with Jim Cramer? He features my stock uh, charts. It's about once a month. He's been doing it for about two and a half years now. Um, I went on the show with him. One of the guys who was here earlier said he saw me on the show in, uh, in August of uh, 2014 uh, when we had a uh, chart week. And that was a lot of fun. I got, the, uh, I got to get on there and, and present some of my charts and talk to Jim. Uh, 
on the uh, on the air. That was a lot of fun. Um, so he, he features my charts every uh, uh, just about every month. Um, I co manage another product for them called uh, Trifecta Stocks, which has been doing extremely well. Um, I manage a daily chat room filled with traders, and my area of expertise is uh, technical analysis, which is charting um, and sentiment analysis and, and the psychology of trading. So you get my background is I taught, I, I'm not, I, I didn't major in psychology, I probably should have. I, did, I think I maybe took two psychology classes when I was in college. Um, but I really understand and really um, try to get into the heads of most people and understand. And again, it's not complicated, it's not rocket science, it's understanding fear and greed. If you understand that everybody has these um, emotions and, and, and reacts to fear and greed, it makes it a lot easier. So um, I was asked to talk about a career path. For, you, for any of you, if you want to, if you want to be a full time or a part time trader, you know that's excellent, really good. I think there there are a lot of people who don't um, uh, really know what they want to do at this point in their, in their life, especially um, when they're here in college, first, second, third, uh, third year of college. Get ready to put some hard work in. Okay, um, I, I, I I talked with a friend of mine, a buddy of mine who I went to high school with, and he's um, uh, trading options with me, and you know he thought that. It would be easy to supplement his own income by trading options and maybe making about a thousand bucks a month. You know, just like, just like that, right? Because trading options is easy, right? It's not. Okay, it's not easy at all. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do. It's the most satisfying, gratifying thing that I've ever done because I get an opportunity every single day that the market is open to to do something different, to make a difference, and to do well. All right, and and the fact that nobody has an edge over me. We all start at the same starting line at six thirty in the morning when the market opens every day. We all start at the same place. Nobody's ahead of me. I can start at the same place as the next guy who's managing five billion, or the or the guy next to me who's only got twenty thousand dollars. If I got a million dollars, we're we're all in the same starting line here, right? We're all we're all moving at the same. We're all going to the same place, but we're all starting together. I like that. I like not I like not having a disadvantage for that. If I can figure out what my edge is, using charts or whatever the options or whatever the case may be, that's what I want. So <clears throat> you see a lot of, you know, as an example, is a lot of people are attracted to the riches and the wealth that are made from options trading. And you know, it, and it's true. You can you can make a lot of money. You, can, you know, you also need a lot of smarts, you need some common sense, and you do need a little bit of luck. Okay? But what is it? Anybody know what the definition of luck is? Luck is, the, is where opportunity, or preparation meets opportunity. Luck equals preparation meeting opportunity. So if you're prepared and you see an opportunity, luck will take care of that for you. So I, I encourage you, if you do get on a career path towards, <clears throat> towards trading and investing, dedicate yourself to learning as much as you possibly can about it. Nobody, nobody you know, steps into the gym and plays basketball, okay, and automatically... Um, has a, a launches a career to go into the NBA, right? You have to work at it. You have to practice at it. You have to be the best of the best, right? It's no different with trading. It's no different with engineering. It's no different um, if you're bagging groceries uh, down over at Vons, okay? You, you want to be the best one that you possibly can be so you can advance and move up and move forward. I would say <clears throat> um, one of the place, one of the areas where people fail if they're into trading, is that they don't have enough capital to work with, all right? There's another, there's a, uh, another side of that um, called on, on position trading. We'll talk about that. Or position size, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But I think um, with the advantage of options, you gain a lot of leverage. The leverage you get is that you can control a lot of uh, contracts. You can control contracts equivalent of shares for a smaller amount of a smaller amount of money. You define your risk, and you can also uh, control it. But there are a lot of people who fail from trading because they don't understand this, and they don't have the exercise, um, and they don't have the patience of doing it. So we talked about luck a moment ago. Anybody can be lucky in the short run, right? Anybody, anybody can have a stroke of luck, right? But I promise you, luck does not continue with any with everybody. I don't care if you carry around a four-wheeled clover with you or a rabbit's foot every single day, okay? You won't get lucky all the time. You have to have some skill involved. And it's okay to get lucky. I get lucky all, all the time, okay? And I get unlucky a lot of the times. It's, and that's okay. I accept that. I accept the results 
That's what we, that's what we all need to do. Preparation, being prepared, is the key to being successful. Preparation is that part of the equation I talked about with luck, right? You can't be lucky if you're not prepared and you're not ready for an opportunity. And finally, the last couple of things um, about, about an option trader's life, and also about success. S success is not about how much you make. For me, I talk about successful traders all the time. A successful trader is somebody who's, who, who has the staying power, who can be around for a little while. Look, anybody can, anybody can, can make a, a, a nice chunk of change on a couple of trades and say, hey, Bob, look at me, I just made that. I just made a 100% return on this trade. What do you think about me? So, well, that's great. It's fantastic. Do it again. And then do it again after that. And then again after that. Keep going. Keep going. Let me see how well you do. Let me see where you are in five years. Are you here or are you working at, at Walmart? I want to know. I want to, I want to see somebody who is sustainable. And that person is somebody who's persistent, who's patient, who, who sees it all, who, 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 got, who goes through not just the good trades and the winning trades, but also the bad trades, the tough trades, the ones that you, you actually lose money on. Look, I will, I will not lie to you. I lose money every day. I make money, but I also lose money. It's the net that makes, makes the difference. And how much do I learn at the end of the day? And I've been at it for a long, long time. And you see the bottom part over here. Most traders' shelf life is somewhere between six months and two years. Now, why, why is that? And I've been around for, I've been trading to options for 12 years. I'm doing something right or I'm doing something wrong, right? Why is it two, six months to two years? Six months would be for somebody who took too much risk, and blew out their account. Two years, this is somebody who doesn't take enough risk, but they're not making enough money on their account in order to sustain their, their life, their lifestyle, pay their rent, all this other stuff. There's a lot of people out there who want to, who, who say, they, okay, I got $100,000, I think I can make, uh, you know, uh, $5,000 a month. Now you tell me, 5% a month, who can make 5% a month? Consistently. Because, let's face it, you know what, the market is, is a perpetual animal, right? Perpetual meaning it never ends, right? So there, there's no, unless you stop trading, the market continues on and on and on and on and on every single day, right? Just like your life until, you're, until your life is over, right? So who can actually say, I've got $100,000 and I can make 5% a month on my, uh, on my trading for as far as the eye can see? Nobody can do it. I promise you, nobody can do that.